Hi, this is Rich Coles from Productive Project Solutions. The purpose of this video is to demonstrate one of the ways I use to create a project charter or product project initiation document and attach that to the intake sheet so it's available for people for future use. So let's have a look. So in my project, what I've got created here is a form which is part of the intake sheet and I've pre-populated it with various information here. So it's a new project request and please fill it to submit a new project. So various information has been filled out on the sheet and if I scroll down to the bottom, key defenses, timings, etc., relevant background information. And what I've enabled here is that it can be a submission status be set to draft or submit. The reason why you do this is that sometimes Actually, you want to go back, you want to share this with someone else, you want to re revisit the content rather than just lock it in straight away, particularly if there's more information to be added. So what you do is you can submit this as a draft, and if you want someone else to review it in the process, you can put in their name down here as an alternative editor, or again, if you don't fill it out, it will just come back to the same person. So if it's set as draft, what will happen is if I submit this to the sheet, I'm now submitting this new project request, if I go back to the project sheet, then this one is going into the sheet. And if I refresh um, as it comes in, so let me refresh this and get it to come in, you'll see hotel has just come in. And you see the document is come through here. Here's the project name. And you can see it's got a document which is attached to it here. Now, this is because I've got mapping for the project initiation document. And here's the project initiation document and you've got the form here, and you can see it's in draft format, and you've got all the various information that will be filled out in this project initiation document. <clears throat> so this is currently set as draft currently. So what I've done is I've set it so that here we've got a notification request, and we've got this one here, so update hotel PID. I set this in such a way that please update it when you're ready to submit. So what further information has been provided? So actually now the budget has changed from, let's just say 2000 to 3000. We know it's gonna take a bit longer um, on that bit. I can update the date um, to this. Um, I could put in some further timings, but it must be the complete, complete before one May. For example, 23. Um, and then I can say now this is changed to submit. And in this way, I'm going to submit the update. And what's going to happen is that the, in terms of automation, so that is now saved. And if I press refresh, what it's going to do is it's going to create a new version of that PID. And if I just do this by row instead of all, so you can see the hotel PID, it is updated version two here. And let's just have a look. What's happened is it's now been updated to 3000 and you can see if I go down to this bit, must be complete by the 1st of May. So this is a way that teams can update a charter or a PID um, during the process. And if it's not right first time, they can be edited and they can ask someone else who's a member of the team to review it. What's happened in this particular case now is I've got it set up so that this has now gone on to the sponsor, who happens to be Demo Productive, um, in this case, to review and approve the PID. So let's have a look. New PID approval request. So let's go into this one. So the following project has been submitted for approval. Please can you review the project initiation document and approve or reject accordingly. So here's the attachment. So the sponsor can then look at the PID. Here's the final one and it's set to submit. You can see and it's got the time and the date when that was set. And I can read through that as a sponsor and go, yep, do I approve or not on this case? So if I close the PID and I go back to it, I'm going to approve the PID on this case. And what's going to happen now is this will be marked as, um, so the approval will come through. I've got it in the sheet here. It's marked as approved. And as a result of that, then the sheet is going to refresh again. And if I would just encourage it to do it, just to speed up the video, then what's going to happen is there'll be a new attachment here. And you can see version three has attached. And if we go into version three, you can now see that this has been approved and is approved on this time here. So this is a way to create a stable document, which will now be held for posterity in terms of the project initiation document. This is what was agreed. It was information that's been inputted by a form and 
then you've got a PDF version which can be shared. So in a lot of project management, having a project initiation document or a charter is key. And again, you want a version that is locked at that moment in time as a PDF. It won't update at all. So you've got that for posterity and you can use it as needed for the stakeholders. You know who signed it off when it was signed off. So that's one way of having a project charter or project initiation document within Smartsheet, just in terms of some of the mechanics of how I've set this up. So one, what I'll go to is I have created a mapping. So generate documents. I have got set up here the mapping for a PID. And if I just go into this one, I've got a PDF form and you can see I've got the various fields here. So if I take one out, you can see project name. I can drag that back in to here. So that's it. What I will just a quick tip for you is in terms of the names, names of the people, what I have got added onto my sheet and so that it doesn't bring through the email address um, of them because using contact cells, I actually create a sponsor text and a PM text, which is the names taken from the contact piece. And so I use PM text and sponsor text here. So you don't end up with a email address instead. So once you've got this set up, etc., save, I'm actually going to just come back out of this one because I don't want to make any changes, don't save. So I've got the mapping, which is once that's been set up and saved once, then you can create automations. And in terms of the automations I've got set to this sheet here, so one, I've created a, an alternative up, um, an alternative editor. So I have got a column in my sheet called alternative editor, and you've been added as the next person to review and update the PID. So that's in case someone wants to use other people. And then I've got this one um, in here in terms of for, so alternative update the PID, and then create update a PID. So this happens when the PID is either in draft or submit state, um, and then it goes in and it generates the mapping. And on that basis, it either then gets sent to the alternative editor or gets sent to the sponsor for approval on that side. And when it's then approved, it's gonna mark it to approved. So in this case, I have a setting for when the sponsor has approved it, here, then that will automatically update this um, this cell here to say approved. And that is what then goes into the final document to say that was approved. And so if you look at the prior versions of it, and we go to view version history here. So version one, just as a recap, is it went down as it had 2000 and then it had the draft. And then if I come out of this one and go back to version two, this. This was then when I updated it and it to 3000 and then said submit. And then if we go to the final version of it, then you can see version three, this was set and that was approved by the sponsor and was approved on this date here. So you've got full history in terms of what has been approved on that document. There you go. So one of multiple ways that you can do charters and project initiation documents within Smartsheet. Hope that's been useful. Thanks for watching and more tips and tricks on project management to follow. Bye for now.